in the house of the Lord today. Thank you for coming. Oh, what a great attendance for uh, this particular Sunday morning. I also want to welcome all of you who are watching online, many of our members that just could not get out today. And then I know that uh, we have several guests that have informed me uh, that uh, they're going to be tuning in. So we welcome you. We want you to worship with us and we want you to uh, be blessed by the presence of the Lord today. And uh, church, that's what we want to do. We've come here, so we might as well worship. Amen. I want to start the service uh, with some announcements. And uh, if you'll pay attention to those, and also those of you who are a church family that are watching online, uh, we want you to uh, hear these announcements. My wife's going to come up and start those announcements. We will have a bridal team for Miss Michaela Barnes. She is back there in the back. For those of you that are, she's usually in the second service. If you're in the first service, there she is. But um, she is registered Main Street Pharmacy, not too shabby, Amazon and Walmart. And she just mentioned a minute ago, um, ladies, if you've got your favorite recipe, she's going to have recipe cards for us to like write out our favorite recipe. So be thinking about that um, next Sunday. All right. And then I want to mention to you that uh, the uh, Shallow Baptist Association Evangelism Conference that was going to take place tonight at First Baptist Adams Bowl has obviously uh, been postponed and we're going to reschedule that. On Wednesday night, uh, Jonathan wanted me to remind the students that you'll be having a glow night. And so, just wanted to mention that to you. I'm not sure what all that means, but it looks like I might have to make an appearance and check it out and get in on what's going on. All right? Also on Wednesday night, if you are interested in going to or receiving more information about our Canada mission trip this summer, we're going to be taking a mission trip to Calgary. And uh, if you're interested in just receiving information, you're not signing up to go Wednesday, but if you want more information, Brother Russ Wilkins is going to be joining us at 5.30 Wednesday night. We're going to be meeting in this last room on the right hallway. So if you're interested, I invite you to come. Our men's breakfast will be this Saturday at 8 o'clock. In the student building. It will not be at the open door to be in the student building, the impact building. And then Saturday afternoon, I would love to invite our church family and those of you uh, who are not part of Riverview, but you're joining us online today. This coming Saturday at 2 o'clock, uh, I have the privilege to sing with a group called Grace Song. And uh, you know uh, the members of that group. And uh, we're going to be just having an afternoon with Grace Song at 2 o'clock at the Savannah Theater downtown. And uh, we would love for you to come and let's just spend an hour to an hour and a half together. And uh, I, I think it's going to be good. We've been planning this and we've got a few surprises in mind. So you come and join us uh, this Saturday. And then also on February the 10th, on Saturday, February the 10th, we're having our second annual Widows and Widowers Banquet. Uh, we want to bless uh, our widows and widowers at noon. On February the 10th, we're going to meet in the multi-purpose room. We'll have a special meal for you and some special entertainment. We're going to have some gifts for you. And just to say that we love you and uh, we want to encourage you in the Lord. There's a sign-up sheet on the round table underneath the chandelier. If you would uh, just put your name down so we'll know uh, how much food to prepare, it's going to be good. And I hope that you can join us. All right? Well, so glad that you're here. I know many of you came. Uh, maybe when you should have stayed at home. And, uh, uh, but we thank you for coming. And seriously, I've been praying that the Holy Spirit of God would just meet with us today. Hey, listen, He is in control. He is the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords. And we get a chance to sing to Him. Let's stand together and sing to our King today. Two.
seated. I'm going to take this opportunity to welcome you uh, to Riverview Baptist Church. If you're a guest with us, uh, we would just like to have a record of your attendance. And there's a card there that's in the seat in front of you. Um, and at some point during the service, if you could just fill that out, uh, we would love to get that from you at the end of the service out in the foyer underneath the TV. Brother Allen and Miss Christie will be out there to get that from you. They would love to meet you and uh, speak to you and get that card. And Brother Allen would love to uh, pray for you this week. Um, so if you're a guest, we would just ask you to do that. Um, this week, um, we want you to pray for uh, several people in our church um, that we love so dearly. I know Miss Jeannie and Miss Donna uh, want to pray for you and, and lift up your families. Um, and then uh, Mr. Gary Powell uh, lost his wife this week, Miss Diane. She uh, uh, had a, a rough, about three weeks, but um, I talked to her son-in-law last night and uh, they all seem to be doing pretty well. Uh, but we want to remember those two families for sure. And then um, Mr. Grady Jackson will be having uh, surgery this week. Uh, as long as everything road-wise, I think, uh, is good. Uh, so we want to remember him in your prayers uh, this week as he goes through an operation and recovery. Um, so lots of things to pray for uh, this week in our congregation. I'm sure I'll probably miss some, but um, we love you. Uh, we want to pray for you. Uh, so could you join me as, uh, as I pray? Lord, we just come to you right now. We just want to lift up these families that have lost loved ones this last week. Lord, we, we know that you can uh, give them the assurance, the, the encouragement, uh, the love that they need. We ask that you would help us to love on them, to encourage them, to comfort them when they need it. Lord, we just ask that um, in the coming days, coming weeks, that you would just uh, give them a peace uh, and a calming and an understanding. Lord, we, we thank you that you can do that and we are calling on you to uh, just send down uh, those, um, those that we have to have in our path to uh, just give us the assurance that we need. But we pray for successful surgeries and we pray that you would just guide doctors and nurses and as they use the equipment they have to use that uh, there's no malfunctions but we ask that uh, you would just use this church to minister to people this week but we ask all this in your name Thank you. this uh, weekend I uh, especially yesterday I just got to thinking about some of the things going on in our church family and uh, even those of you and things that we take for granted like water and some of you who do not have water at this point and uh, things like that things like encountering death and, and health issues and uh, relationship issues I, I, and job issues and it was as if God just spoke to my heart and said Alan uh, I, I want you together with the family of God on Sunday, on the Lord's Day. And uh, I, I just felt like he put in my heart that this just needs to be a service of encouragement. And uh, when the Lord spoke to my heart about that, I thought about this song that the choir's not sung probably in six months. But I want you to be encouraged that great is His faithfulness. His mercy is new every morning. If you have felt the dark of night, questioning what is out of sight, He is the answer. He is the
wrote this song. Be not dismayed, whatever
fire. I've got that song on my mind. I want you to be encouraged today. He knows our name. And I can promise you this, that He will deliver us through the fire. Through the fire. Because He's just that big of a God. Be encouraged today. So many times I question certain circumstances, things I could not understand. Many times I try, weakness blurs my vision. That's when my frustration gets so out of hand. Then I am reminded. Stand one day alone and look at all the victory, and the spirit rises up in me as through the fire my weakness is made strong. Joy 
is not a feeling. Joy is a choice knowing that we've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And knowing that our sins have been washed away. Knowing that our name is in the Lamb's book of life. We're redeemed. We're saved. We're on our way to heaven. Fallon, come and remind us of that.
you do what I tell you to do. I didn't hear an audible voice. It was a whole lot louder than that. You understand? The, the book of Romans is a doctrinal book. I, I mean, in throughout that book, we, we find the following doctrines. The depravity of man. Uh, the judgment of God. The atoning sacrifice of Christ. We learn about things such as justification and sanctification and glorification. We learn about things like uh, the security of the believer. That's some pretty major stuff. And then in chapter 12 of Romans, it kind of takes a turn and the Apostle Paul focuses his attention on how to apply these great spiritual truths into our lives. And from Romans 12 to 16, uh, the Apostle Paul takes these great, deep theological truths and he tells people like me and you, hey Alan, here's how I want you to apply these great spiritual truths that I wrote about earlier in this letter. I find it interesting that in Romans 16, there's not a lot of theology here, but there's plenty of application here. And in this service today, I mentioned to you earlier that God just really impressed upon my heart that we, we need, we need a Sunday just to encourage one another. I know that we have guests here today that are uh, members of other churches that could not meet today. And I want you to know if, if that's you, you're not excluded in this. Because we're all a part of the family of God. Um, but Romans 16 talks about a lot of people. Most of the names are hard to pronounce. And if you don't study it through, you just read through it quickly, and you don't think that much about it. But today, I just want to talk to you concerning this subject, we need one another. We need one another. Uh, Bill Gaither wrote this song. We sing it sometimes. He says, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. We're joint heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. And I, I love the verse that says, you will notice that we say brother and sister around here. It's because we're a family. <clears throat> and these folks are so near. When one has a heartache, we all share the tears and we rejoice in each victory in this family so dear. Paul comes to the conclusion of his letter in the book of Romans and, and he encourages the believers to express their thankfulness and their gratitude to certain people. In fact, he mentions these people by name and behind each name is a special commendation. In other words, Paul is saying, listen, I'm not only going to write their names out, I'm going to tell you how they have blessed my life. Can we just get in on Paul's letter and, and his thought about how he needed other Christians in his life? And I want us to put ourselves in Paul's place on how we really need each other. Would you look at Romans 16 and verses 1 and 2. Paul says, I commend to you our sister Phoebe, who is a servant of the church, which is at Centuria, that you receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints, and that you help her in whatever manner she may have need of you. For she herself has also been a helper of many, and of myself as well. Let, let's pray. Lord, thank you that Fallon reminded us, even if we're going through the fire, that we can choose joy. And Lord, I want to thank you 
for your salvation and forgiveness and mercy and grace. Thank you that when you say this, you placed us into a family. We are sons and daughters of the Most High God. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you that you established this institution called the church where we can share each other's heartache and celebrate with each other's victory. Thank you for the people that you placed in our life. For those in the room, for those watching online, whether they be members of Riverview or not, God, I pray that you would speak to our hearts today and may the principles from your word take root in our life and may we make a difference in whatever church we're a part of by using these principles. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In verses 1 and 2, he says, I, I want to commend to you this lady named Phoebe. Phoebe. Uh, he said, I want you to receive her in the Lord because she has been a help to me. She has served the Lord through the local church. Here's what I'm reminded of when I think of people like Phoebe. That, that context talks about Phoebe was willing to do what others would not do. She helped many people through her service. Phoebe represents those people who serve in those thankless jobs at the church. Uh, those people that serve behind the scenes. Those people that might find some trash in the floor and they just pick it up because they, they don't want the church to look dirty. Those people who serve behind the scenes, we talked about them last week. Those people who get here early and greet. Those security team members. I, I bragged on them last Sunday. I'm really going to brag on them today now that it's single digits. I, I mean, thank God for those people. Thank God for those who call members in our church and say, hey, I just want to let you know I missed you. You are loved. I just want to check on you. The preacher doesn't know about those phone calls, but I know that it takes place. Phoebe represents those people in the church that uh, do things uh, that are really thankless jobs. In fact, they don't want to be th they don't have to be thanked because they're doing it. I, I just want to ask you, Riverview family, or if you're involved in another church, who are those people that come to mind that are just serving and they don't make a big deal about it, but yet they're, they're just serving? Um, I, I mentioned, I don't know, I don't think, I know he doesn't want any praise, but thank God Eric Rogers Clayton came up here. I don't know how long it took him but a lot longer than I'm going to be out there cleaning the parking lot. But thank you, Eric, for doing that. I, I mean, people uh, have, have given and put landscape around the studio. But I, I mean, there's just a lot of things that go on around here. Some things we know about, some things we don't. Who, who is it in the church that just serves in some of those areas? We, we ought to thank them for that. We ought to thank them. Verse 3, he says, Greet Prisca. That, that's Priscilla. That's how we know her name. Uh, Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who for my life risk their own necks, to whom not only do I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Uh, Aquila and Priscilla, we find... And in Acts chapter 18, verses 3 and 4, that this husband and wife team were tent makers, and they let the Apostle Paul stay with them. They offered hospitality. Get this. They ministered to Paul, who was being ridiculed and persecuted. I mean, honestly, they went out on a limb to invite Paul into their home uh, to live with them. Because as people were searching out him to persecute and perhaps kill, you think about that. You invite a Paul into your home, you're setting yourself up for persecution and perhaps execution. And Paul said, I, I want to 
thank Aquila and Priscilla because they offered hospitality. You see, those two people, they represent those people who stand with you when others stand against you. I, I mean, they're with you through thick and thin. I, I just want to ask you, who in the church would represent those people? I mean, they've got your back. When you were as low as a snake's belly, they came along and they encouraged you. When you felt betrayed, these people came along and said, you know what, I'm going to take you by the hand and we're going to walk through this together. I'm just wondering, who comes to mind? Paul says we need each other and we ought to commend them. We, we ought to take time to thank them. Then, then in verse 5, he says this, Also, uh, I want you to greet Apantus, my beloved, who is the first convert to Christ from Asia. Apantus was the first person who got saved in Asia. Sometimes, sometimes we just allow new believers to figure things out on their own. We think they're saved, they've been baptized, they're good to go, but yet they might not have grown like you've grown in the faith. They need to grow, and they need somebody to help them grow spiritually. Who was it that took an interest in you after you got saved and encouraged you through the Word of God? Who told you that they would pray with you and for you? Who was it that, that just sent you perhaps a, a scripture from time to time? Who was it that sent that text message and just said, you know what, I'm going to pray for you. And if you need me, I want you to call me. I, I want to walk with you on this journey. Paul said those type people like a Pantus, they, they ought to be commended. They, they, they ought to be thanked. And then in verse 6, he says, greet Mary who has worked hard. For you. Mary, the hard worker. Uh, Mary represents those people in the church who are just flat out hard workers. They're dependable. If they say they're going to do it, they're going to do it. They're dedicated. They're loyal. And they just don't do things media with mediocrity. I mean, they give it all for the glory of Christ. Who is it, Riverview, that comes to your mind when you think about just dependable, loyal, faithful people who serve the Lord with excellence? Who, who is it that comes to mind? Those people ought to be things. Yes, those of you watching online that are not members of who is it at your church that's just loyal and dependable? We ought to commit those people from time to time because the fact of the matter is we need each other. And then in verse 7, greet Andronicus and Junius. You might say, did you get those words right? No, I just read them fast because you don't know and I don't either. So <laughs> greet those two people, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners who were outstanding among the apostles who were also in Christ before me. These two people, it's, it's scholars say they were either a husband and wife or they were brother and sister. Either way, on what, uh, on what occasion they were in prison, it's not known. But the fact of the matter is, these two people were in prison with Paul. In fact, some scholars say these two people were thought to be Paul's cousins. It's thought to be that these two people, it's very well possible that Paul was related to these two people. And the Bible says they were saved before Paul was saved. The point is to encourage our own family members to walk with God, to stay the course, to be faithful. Sometimes we forget about our family members because we focus on others, but the fact of the matter is even our own family needs to be encouraged. Dads, our own family needs to be encouraged. Who, who comes to mind in your family that you just need to say, you know what, I appreciate you. You keep on walking with God. And then in verse 8, 
He says, Greet Ampletus, my beloved, in the Lord. Uh, Ampletus. Ampletus was known to have been a Roman slave who had become a Christian. And Paul said, I dearly love that man. When he says, my beloved in the Lord, it, it translates out, I dearly love this guy right here. He, he's been a friend to me. I, I, I just want to know, who, who do you dearly love? I, I'm talking about dearly love. You take a bullet for him. I'm just telling you, those people, you ought to commend those people. Listen, I just want you to know you've been a blessing in my life. I love serving the Lord with you. I dearly, dearly love you. Who, who is it? Paul says we ought to commend those people. And then in verse 10, he says, Greet Apelles, the approved in Christ. The word approved means mature. The, the mature, the spiritually mature in Christ. That, that word also indicates integrity and character. And Paul is saying, hey, listen, uh, Apelles, he, he is a spiritually mature man. He is a man of integrity and deep character. I want to encourage us. We ought to express our thanks from time to time to those spiritually mature men that God has put in our lives. I want to tell you that I tell teenagers all the time. I tell young adults all the time. I want to tell our church family as many times as I can tell it. God has put in our midst some spiritually mature men. Now, I'm not talking necessarily about age. It could be age. But I'm just talking about in their spiritual life, they're mature. They're men of faith. They're men of integrity and character. And Paul is saying, thank God for people like that. I just want to ask you, River, who comes to mind? Who comes to mind? A spiritually mature man, full of integrity and character. Those, those guys, uh, we, we ought to commend them. If, if God puts them on our heart, we, we ought to thank them some way, some how. Express our thankfulness to those guys. And then in verse 12, I love these names. He's talking about three ladies here. Greet Trophania and Trophosa. We've got some ladies in our midst who are expecting babies. If you find out it's a girl, those might be two good names you want to consider. <laughs> These two ladies are workers in the Lord. And then, don't forget, greet Persis, the beloved, who has worked hard in the Lord. And Paul is saying there's three women here that have worked hard for the Lord in the local church. And I just want to publicly write and tell them, Thank you, thank you, thank you for your service to the Lord. Now, I just want to ask you, Riverview, who comes to mind? Those ladies who are spiritually mature, who serve the Lord, who are they? they, they we ought to take time occasionally to thank them and commit them. They're not perfect. The spiritual men are not perfect. But overall, their lifestyle is one of integrity faithfulness, dedication to the Lord and to His church. And then he says in verse 13, Greet Rufus, a choice man in the Lord, also his mother and mine. Paul says that this guy named Rufus, uh, he says that the mother of Rufus was just like a mother to him. And he said, I commend my friend Rufus and his mother, who was just like a mother to me, I want to commend them. Uh, they're serving the Lord together. And the church, the church in Rome was keenly aware of these families. What family is it that you look at and you say, obviously they don't have it all together because nobody does. But this family, oh, they're faithful to the Lord. They love God. They're serving God. 
They are a blessing to my life. I just want to ask you, Riverview, and whatever church you go to, what, what, what family is it that comes to your heart and mind that you would say, boy, oh, I'm so glad to be able to worship with them. They've been a blessing to me. I just observe their life, and they're, they're just faithful to the Lord. Paul says we ought to take time occasionally to commend those people. I don't want to close on a downer, but I would say this in verses 17 and 18. Not everybody, Paul said, I want you to commend. He says in verse 17, Now I urge you, brethren, keep your eye on those who cause dissensions and hindrances contrary to the teaching which you learned and turn away from them. I'm telling you before God, I don't want to be found in verse 17. I don't want my life to be characterized by verse 17 of someone that sows discord and deceit. Discord and deceit. And I just want to tell you, the fact of the matter is, we've got people in our church that fit the characteristics of those that we've spent the majority of the message on. And Paul is reiterating that we need each other. Especially in the times in which we live, we need each other. I want you to know that everybody in this room is important to the Lord. You're important to the church. You're important to the family of God. But sometimes we get so busy, we just don't take time and say, thank you. Our church family has been hit recently, just with stuff. Just with stuff. We've got some church family who are going through some stuff. And I felt so impressed of God yesterday to preach this sermon because people need to be encouraged. Now, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Some of you are not going to believe it. You, you are not going to believe it. But if you have your phone with you, would you just take it out? Would you just take it out right now? It's okay. It's okay. Just take it out right now. <coughs> if you're at home, you're watching online, just get your phone. And you probably, well, you're already on your phone. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell I'm a technological genius. You know that. <laughs> In just a moment, those of you watching online, we're going to go off air. And I want you to take the time to do what I'm going to ask the people in the room to do. Now, I know that we have guests here. And I'm going to ask you to participate in what we're getting ready to do. However, you do it with the people in your church. If that requires a text, then text them. If that requires you sitting there praying for your church family and the needs of your church, then do it. The invitation is going to be totally different today. First and foremost, let me tell you this. If you want to be saved this morning, you want to be a part of the family of God, I'm going to be right here at the front. And, and, and I want you to come and say, oh, I want to be saved. In fact, I, I'm, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to ask Jonathan... Farrell to come stand here in just a moment. I'm going to ask Cameron Victory, Victory to come stand over there. I'll minister to young adults, minister to students. I, I'm going to stand here. Uh, perhaps you want to be saved today. Come up to one of us. Say, I, I want to be saved. Boy, we'd be so proud to lead you to the Lord. Your life could be changed today. Perhaps there's some in the room. And even on this cold, snowy morning, the Lord's placed upon your heart that this is where you ought to put your membership. I invite you to come today saying, I, I, I want to join Riverview. We're not going to sing. Shirley's going to start playing. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. You come. You come. Here's also what I'm going to ask you to do. In just a moment, we're going to stand. I don't want to put anybody on the spot. But perhaps there's just some people in the room that fit one of these categories. Or today would be a good day just to go to them and say, hey, 
you, you fit this blessing in my life. You, you fit one of those categories. I just want to tell you thank you. I just want to tell you thank you. You've got your phone out. Perhaps the person's not here. Or perhaps you say, you know what? I'm so introverted. I don't even know that I can do that. I want you to text them. That's okay. Just text, just, just stand there or sit there and just text them. Perhaps they're at home today and, and you've got their number. Perhaps you just want to text them. Here's the deal. We need each other. We need each other. You might say, Alan, are you just fishing for compliments? Absolutely not. I'll promise you before the Lord God. I, come talk to me if you want me to pray for you, if you want to be saved, if you want to join this church. It's not about me. It's about each other. I want you to go to each other. All right? So, here it is. If nobody moves, we're going to pray and go to the house or whatever you're going to do. Some of you are ready to get out of the house and you'll find something to do. Uh, but Shirley's going to play. Perhaps you've got a special need. You just need to come to this altar and lay it before the Lord. Are you okay? All right? So I want everybody to participate in this invitation. Whether it's sitting down praying, standing up praying, sitting there texting somebody, finding somebody in the room, coming to this altar to pray, coming to join this church, coming to get saved, whatever it is. I'm not putting anybody on the spot. I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. If you just need to sit there, just sit there. But you be obedient to the Lord. Lord, we need each other. And God, you've designed it that way. God, thank you for our church families. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to express our thankfulness to each other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shirley's playing. You can stand if you want to stand. Sit if you want to sit. Just be obedient to the Lord, okay? If you want to stand, go ahead and stand, okay?